Lord, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on all that thou art called, only Jesus do not pass me by Savior 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 hear my humble cry Why on all that thou art born or chief Jesus do not pass me by everybody sing pass me not O oh gentle Savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art called all in do not pass me by Savior Savior hear my humble cry all that thou art born, only Jesus do not pass me by.
Jesus was said in his blood, and I'm not going to have a Christmas and that guy go everywhere. But then I thought my father would send you a private place, and I'm not going to come up on that. But what can I do for you and what I have done for the disciples? And then I'm going to feel that Jesus had the power of the disciples. And then he said to them, I'm going to give you power above all the powers of your enemies. And I'm not too shy by any means of us to. Jesus has transformed them. Tonight, as I take gift of Jesus wants every believer to have at least one gift. And so as I as I call out different gifts, I will not call out all of them because we still have next Wednesday. Write down the one that appeals to you. And begin today to say to God, help me to pray. To pray at this level of responsibility. My heart bleeds when I see so many believers who have, who are powerless and are doing nothing for God. They are doing nothing for their neighbors. They are helping nobody. They just care about themselves. That is not God's plan for his people. There are 34 gifts of the Holy Spirit. And God would like you to operate in one. Use one to demonstrate that measure of God's power in your life. Can we quickly turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12? Let's take verse 4. Some of it was this here. The Bible said there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are so many gifts. You know, there are so many people who come here and they don't have any gifts that shows they are not ordinary people. There are so many who go to churches where nobody helps them to be an instrument in God's hands. The Bible says there are what? Diversities of gifts. Read on. And there are differences of administrations. There are differences in administration. You know, we have this great problem in the Christian family in Nigeria. If my ministry is not patterned after your own, I am the other people. If I don't sing the way you sing, I am the other people. If I don't dance the way you dance, I am the other people. But the Bible said there are differences in administration, but by the same word, spirit. We all cannot be one. Everybody cannot be a church planter. There is something so many people miss. If all of us are planting churches, there will be no unity. I was able to set up PFN in 1985 because I don't plant churches, so churches can trust their members, can give their members to me, knowing that I return those members to them. Churches can allow me to husband and her nurse the resources. Because I have no interest in, in planting churches and competing with them. That is not my calling. But some people say, why will you regard him as a leader? Because he's not pastoring churches. <laughs> and they as a wrong program. One man that hates me with passion. That was his, that was his um, argument. Why does the president honor a woman he doesn't have churches. The president said, I like him because he has anointing more than most church leaders, but prefer to serve others. We all cannot be doing the same thing. Have you looked at your body? Your eyes cannot do what the ears can do. The legs can do what the hands can do. Can they? No. And yet they are one part, they are one what? Body. I'm going to start a teaching session believing that God will give me time. The problem I have is that the demand of me is more than something I can cope with. The churches in London, they want me to come 
and relocate to London. And I said, it's not possible. Those in Canada, they want me to speak two weeks every year, which I've done for a good 16 years. They still want more. And I said, no. I can save different church. I gave birth to, or we gave birth to, to the Anglican Church Evangelical Movement. They could trust me because I don't plan church. I still speak for them. The Anglican Church Dowsies in Port Harcourt. I speak for them every year. And they're able to raise a crowd of 700,000, 500,000, 900,000. That was this one year I raised 32 million for them as offering one day. If you say the, you know, sometimes you think your toes are not important. Have you ever had what they call growing in toenail? You can't wear shoes again. In 1975, I had it. And I wore my slippers and wore my suit over my slippers. My aunt saw me and said, you look more like a leopard than a pastor. What happened to your toes? And I told her, I have growing in toenail. She said, come, let's go and operate on you. And I said, no, I don't take medicine. She said, it's okay, we'll operate you without uh, anesthesia. That was the day I saw her. one of us must contribute something. Read on. Let's go back to you. And there are diversities of operations. There are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in it all. It is the same spirit that gives these gifts to profit everybody. Ignorance is a terrible thing. I don't know how many of you know that in heaven there will be no denominational uh, flags. Father, I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comfort. He will give you another comfort. That he may abide with you for That him. he may abide with you. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of whom truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Which the world cannot because receive. Because he seeth him not. Yes. Neither knoweth him. You but see, unbelievers don't know the spirit of God. They don't see him. They don't understand him. But God wants to give us the spirit of God that we may be special and different from others. Can we now turn to the book of Mark chapter 4? We take 11 through verse 12. The book of Mark chapter what? 4. What does it say? Be fast. And he said unto them, yes. unto you it is given to know. Every believer you are taught how to operate the Bible. It's given to you to do what? To know the mystery of to the know kingdom the of God. To know the of the call of God and of the kingdom. As a child of God, God wants to show you how to operate the mysteries of the kingdom. Go on. But unto them that are without. All those who are unbelievers. All these things are done in parables. Everything we do here is just a waste of time. That they seen, are all in That seeing they may see. That, is, that in seeing they may see. And not perceive. And not understand. And hearing wait, they may. wait, wait. All those who are here, do you know, not everybody is allowed to understand what I'm saying or understand the Bible. There are people, unless you are born again, you cannot understand the Bible. Why? You are an outsider. Unless you are born again, you can't understand the mysteries. Why? A mystery is a hidden wisdom. Not everybody will understand. Some people come here, they don't know how to operate the Bible and rise above their problems and sit on their problems. Tonight I want to ask, do I have anybody who has a desire to know the mysteries of the kingdom? Anybody here? Are you sure? Some of you cannot because you come only when you have no money. I want special prayer. Can we clap for this madam? She has just come back from Abuja. Now, you see how much they love you. You will pay. When people love you, you must pay. There are too many gifts that God gives us. I want to pick the first one I call wisdom. Why? 
How many of you know the difference between failure and success is wisdom? That you're not doing well in life because you don't have wisdom. That your marriage is not doing well because you don't have wisdom. That you can't eat three times a day because you don't have wisdom. Hey, when you know what you need and don't know how to get it, it's because you don't have wisdom. And yet this awesome God will serve wants to bless you with wisdom. But it's conditional. You must ask. And so many of us are just arrogant, stupidly arrogant. We can't ask because we think we know it all. How many of you know that God does not come into your situation without you inviting him? As far as you say, I know it all, God will just pass you by. And there are so many people who conclude they know it all. You know, it is easy to learn the born-again grammar lock. You can speak the language of the born-again people. You can talk their talk. You can't walk their walk. As a result, you will be struggling through life. You'll be humiliated through life. You will not, you will not live a life of distinction. And there are so many of us in that place. They go about borrowing. Everywhere they go, give me money, give me money. Can you help me with money? How many of you know that wisdom is a commander of wealth? The wiser you are, the richer you will be. Let's start our journey. I want to ask. Do I have anybody who really wants to have wisdom? Anybody here? Let's begin from the book of James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you the Bible lack wisdom, says, if anybody here lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. If any man says, I don't have wisdom, hey, do I have anybody who feels he or she is not wise enough? Anybody here? Something tells you are not wise enough. Is that true? Can you write down wisdom as one of the things you want God to do for you between today and next week, Wednesday? All of us, we need wisdom. The wiser you are, the more successful you will be. The, more, the wiser you are, the more, so, the more pleasurable your life will be. If in your marriage there is problem, problem is there because there is no wisdom. It is not what you say in your marriage that matters, but how you say what you say. Nobody can function beyond the knowledge God has given him. Can we then zero into chapter 24 of the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 3, 4, 5? Let's be fast. Through wisdom is an house built. Everybody hear me, the Bible say, the Bible said, through wisdom is a marriage, a home, a life, a health determined. What does that mean? How many of you know between your kitchen and your dining table? You can kill your family members. There are so many women, all they give is gari, rice, apple, corn. Uh, that's all they give. And pap. And what again? Yeah. This is a way of asking to die quickly so that they can share your property. How many of you know that unripe plantain can reduce the sugar level in the blood of your family members? How many of you know that bitter leaf squeezed, bitter leaf juice can lower the sugar level and the, and the high blood pressure in the lives of your family members? How many of you know that ordinary beings can enhance healing? There are so many beautiful food items that you can save your family members and they will live long. But it's not so. Ignorance is also a terrible thing. So the Bible says you can't rise above what you know. Again, how many of you know that a happy home prolongs your life? A home where you can come in and sleep happily and prolong your life. A fighting home cannot live long. The Bible now says the wisdom God has given you determines how far your marriage will go. 
How many of you know that when you walk out of your husband or walk out of, of your wife and abandon your children, that they're going to suffer? And yet in anger, you can walk out to your husband and say, hey, oh, enough is enough, I'm gone. And those children will grow up without a mother, without a father. And they can become armed robbers. But they may even run after you and kill you also, as they kill others. But when an armed robber used to killing people, he can kill anybody, including the mother. The Bible says, wisdom determines how far you go in your marriage and your life. The girl does not want to be toler- does not want to be tolerated. She wants to be celebrated. So when you marry her, don't treat her like she's nobody, or she can pour hot water on your head. When you marry her, my friend, you must meet her needs. When she wants a change of clothes, change her wardrobe. Don't tell her you don't have money. Because where she comes from, they meet her needs excitedly. Again, every intelligent girl you want to, everybody wants to marry an educated intelligent girl. But how many of you know that every intelligent girl wants to probe what they're doing? Yes, you left that house by 8 a.m. Where have you been? Don't tell her I went somewhere. Now lie. She wants to know where. And she wants evidence that you were there. So when you marry a pretty girl, slow down and listen to her music and dance according to her music. Children, my friend, train them. Children who don't have patience with idiots. Don't tell your child there's no money, so there's no food. Money or no money, put food on the table. Daddy, I'm hungry. <laughs> and only wisdom can help you solve this problem. Sometimes you get angry. I, I, one of my one of my uncles had ten children. Every time schools would open. He will start a song that says, see what I've done to myself. See what I've done to myself. And I think that my brother, whatever he did to himself, the children don't care. What they want is their school fees. Some girls too want to marry the son of that rich man. Hey, a man can come from a rich family and not be rich himself. From a rich family, and that family's name will mock you. I don't care how many house boys your father has. You must learn how to sweep and tidy up your room, or else you'll be nobody in life. Okay, your father has a house, my dear. You can sell that house and finish that money within one month. One of my sisters, a big high court judge. They gave her three million pounds. She went to London and saw a beautiful bed that sold for three million pounds. You know, she paid the whole money to the owners of the bed. When she realized the money was gone, she said to her, no, 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 no. Hey, give me back my money and take, take your bed. They said, Madam, we have sold the bed. We can't take it back. She sat down there and cried, but London is too far from Nigeria. To them, she was only a customer. To us, she's a judge. Men and brethren, we need to cry out to God and say, Father, give me what? Wisdom. Give me wisdom. That your church is not doing well as a pastor is because you don't know the Lord that says, where the pasture is green, the sheep will always be there. A pastor who has good messages and can give messages every week, members will be there to hear the next thing he has to say. Oh, they don't like you because you're from a Caribbean time. It's a lie. You don't have a message. And so the Bible says, your life cannot rise above your knowledge, above your wisdom. No. Don't blame others. So easy to blame others. Can we quickly run to the book of Proverbs 16, 16? What does this say? 16, 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? The Bible says wisdom 
is more useful, more serviceable, better than what? Gold. Wisdom. And the, the great news tonight is that this God wants to give you wisdom. If you can only cry out and say, Father, I, I, don't, I am not wise enough. But pride won't let you say it. Pride won't let you say it. Anybody here who can give up his dinner for two weeks and cry for the gift of wisdom, his life will change. And we now move on to chapter 2 of the book of Proverbs. Let's take verse 8, 9, 10. No, okay, let's take verse 10, 11, 12. When wisdom entereth right into thy heart. When wisdom gets into your heart. And knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. And knowledge is also pleasant unto your soul. Discretion shall preserve thee. Discretion shall will preserve. preserve you. See, wisdom and knowledge are great friends. And they are great partners. And they can prosper you. How many of you know that wisdom and knowledge will determine how far your health will go? There is no sickness that God cannot cure. You, but you must ask God, what do I do to get a cure to this sickness? We must ask him. Do you know, just changing your diet can change your life and change your health. Just changing what to eat. What, just changing the way you conduct your life. There are so many of us who don't know how to rest. Which is an act of ignorance. If you don't know how to rest, you can't make it in life. Because refusal to rest leads to easy irritability. And any man of easy irritability cannot reach his canine. Any man that gets easily angry cannot reach his canine. Already easy irritability is a self-destructive habit. How many of us get easily angry in this hall? Anybody here who is honest enough? Who knows that he or she gets me angry? Can I have you raise up your hand? Raise it very well. So people don't even know their problems. How many of you know, if you don't know your sickness, nobody can cure you? Is that correct? And let me ask the question one more time. How many of you get this little angry? Can I see your hand raised up? <laughs> okay. You soon die without knowing what killed you. <laughs> We had a good drama yesterday. I was asking a man, you get this easily angry. He asked, who, he asked me, who, me? The, husband, the wife said, yes. Even this morning, you almost slapped me. Satan is so crafty. He will not allow us to confront our sickness and our sins and our weakness and our failure. He tells us we only get angry because people provoked us to anger. How many of you know it takes 25 muscles to smile and 72 muscles to show your anger? The Bible says if you have wisdom and knowledge, you are going to have the spirit of discretion, which is to say you will know when to get angry, when not to get angry, when to do something, when not to do that thing. Read on. Take us to this. Where did, where did you start? Discretion okay. shall preserve thee. Understanding discretion. shall keep well, thee. Discretion is powerful. It simply says, when a man says, hey, I, 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 you're a pretty girl. What a smashingly, gorgeously pretty girl. Just know that man wants to have sex with you. Because no man amongst men is bold enough to say to a girl, can I have sex with you? No. They begin by flattering you. Hey, what a wonderful girl. In 1978, Ezekiel and myself, the CPM leader, were in a lift. As we walked into a lift, a sister was following us. The man who was inside the lift saw her and said to her, bless is the womb that bore you. And then 
he moved to her and said to her, you must be an angel. Don't tell me you're a human being. I've never seen one as pretty as you. You must be an angel. And if an angel, you are here in Nigeria for the first time. Do you know I was shocked that this girl began to smile? Even with us, uh, by her side, she began to smile like a Cheshire cat from ear to ear. Like a locomotive engine taking off on a Sunday morning. Men are not bold to say to a girl, can I have sex with you? No, they start by flattering you. Because the word flattery is Satan's language. It's, it's not Satan's language. Zekiel was bolder than me. He turned and said to the man, I rebuke the demon of fornication in you. I bind that demon. So then the man lowered his face and said to me, Reverend, are you here? My friend, if you didn't see my big head, you see my big stomach. They are telling me, Reverend, are you here? That's what the Bible calls discretion. Find out and things you need to avoid things you don't need to get involved in. Yes, if you are among those that are attracted by beautiful girls, I have bad news for you. Beautiful girls will never end. Every week, new ones will come. Everyone, every week, new ones will come. If you are among those who go from church to church in search of a girl to be friend, there are always new people are coming. Old ones are going. New ones are coming. And you come into what you call insatiable desire for girls. And the Bible now says wisdom can help you. When I hear of a girl relating to a boy for two years, for one year, for three years, I feel like flogging the girl. What is a girl doing around you? I mean, what is a boy doing around you except, except to marry you? And if the boy has no money to marry you, just say goodbye to him. And once he moves, don't turn back to look at him. I, I told my wife I would like to marry her in the month of September. In the month of December, we were married. As a result, we are still cutting each other 35 years after. To keep cutting a girl, there must be something powerful that is compelling you to do it. That's what short cutting does for you. The longer you know a man, the more he takes you for granted. The longer you know a man, the more you invite temptation. And once you're in love with a girl and she touches you, even your leg, you have riot in your head, you begin to see double. The worst time in any man's life is when he falls in love. His head should be lowered. As a believer, you will do things you have never done before. It's the, it's the most dangerous time of any believer's life. Once you're in love, your head is lowered. If you are married to a very stubborn girl who has seen the world before, she will likely ask you to prove you love her by hugging her. If you love me, hug me. That one hug will send riot into your head. You begin to see television that is not there. And then, at the day Satan will plan to destroy you, she asks you, can you kiss me? Do you know any man who can kiss you can go to bed with you? Any man who can kiss you, you are you're only one prayer away from hell. Once a man can kiss you, my dear, you just ask God to come down with angels to help you. Because you are, you are the age of hellfire. So, don't cut a man for more than three months. If the man is not ready to take you to the altar, sack him. Tell him I said so. Use me as an example, as an excuse to sack the man. And I said, boy, <laughs> if you don't want to be a father, when you see the young man, run away. Because this 
These children, they don't care about your age. Once you call them, they'll come from heaven and say, we're here. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> this buy us uh, food. Children's uh, food. Take care of us. Buy us uh, worker. Take care of us. Tell the child I am an applicant. The child doesn't know the view. <laughs> and no father wants to see his son, jobless son, come home with a child. If your father is as strong as me, he'll give you the beating of your life before telling you how happy he is. That's what wisdom will help you to run away from all these things. And as a young man not married and not fully employed, you don't have your own house, you don't have your own kitchen. Any day you see a pretty girl, just plead the blood of Jesus. Please don't greet her. Don't, don't even look at her twice. The danger in looking at her twice is you are going to you are going to create a picture in the laboratory of your heart. Long after she shall have gone, you can recall her picture, which we call lost. And when you recall her picture, you will smile like a Cheshire cat. That's the trouble waiting for. You know, when you get to that level, you have to come an accident waiting to happen. And as we dismiss from fellowship, find your way to your home. Don't start looking for that. Where is that sister? Leave the sister alone. Unless you're ready to marry her within three months. If you lodge the check and have not cut the check, so just leave her alone. If the thing requires cash, ready cash. Don't buy wedding materials on credit. You must pay. In fact, you don't tell, you don't go to our parents and say to them, eh, after the next market day, I will bring the man will kick you out of this house. You must go with the wedding materials if they will listen to you. So the Bible now says you need wisdom. Wisdom will show you which way to go, which way not to go. Read on, take, give us verse 12. What does verse 12 say? To deliver thee from the way of the evil man. Have you, have you heard what I was saying is right? Wisdom will deliver you from, the, from what? From the evil man. I don't know if you know what I'm trying to say. You know, when you put a girl in the family way, if you like run to London, she'll be waiting for you. And pray that she will have no brothers. Because if she has brothers and you put them in the family and run away, the day they will see you, they will turn into a punching bag. You know how boxers practice. And unfortunately, when you see a girl along the road, you will not know whether she has brothers or not. Am I correct? Nobody goes about with her brothers. Girls, don't, they just go alone. And if you seduce her and lure her into sin and she gets pregnant, then wait for her brothers. Because they will come on boxing practice. <laughs> on Sunday, we're talking about a young man who put a girl in the family where and abandoned her. The brother told me he went there and showed the young man his muscle. I said to him, before I get really angry, do something. Because if I, if I touch you, <laughs> the boy came in from London. I was told that somebody had messed up his sister, beat her up, and abandoned, and abandoned her. He found his way to the young man's house. He said he showed him his muscle. Said, don't touch. Don't There are some girls that have four of some brothers. <laughs> if they visit you, you will soon say bye bye to this world. Wisdom 
shows you where the checkpoints are. He said, don't go too far. Only wisdom can put a check on your desires and say to you, please, careful. And this day that we have kidnappers, do you know the brother can pay kidnapper to kidnap you? To kidnap you. So who amongst us needs wisdom? Can I have you raise up your hand? Uh, everybody, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay, let's move on. We're going to hear more about wisdom. In fact, I intend to speak about wisdom today. Let us now take, uh oh, time is not to be on our side. Let's run to the book of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10. If the iron be blunt, if a man is ignorant, and he do not wait the age, I do not wait the age, then must he put to more strength. You are going to put more energy and time than others would put. But wisdom is profitable to direct. The Bible says wisdom is profitable because wisdom tells you how to get what you want. Wisdom gives you direction and direction is a master key to success. But let's run down to Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. What does he say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and destruction. The Bible says the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. When you're alone, when nobody's around, please allow your conscience to speak to you. Don't kill your conscience. Don't say to yourself, hey, I don't care what anybody will say or do. No, one day you will care. A man that says, God, I don't want to offend you. I don't want to grieve you. A man that says to God, Father, I just don't want to make you unhappy. No, a man that knows that anybody you cheat has a father, and that father is God. And that father, I'm going to make a very beautiful sentence now. You know, you cannot cheat any believer and go free. Let's see the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 12. What does he say? You can't it's, cheat a believer and go free. Yes? It was said to no, her. No, sorry. 12, 9, 12. I mean, 19, 12. No, what did I say? Sorry. I'm getting old ages catching on with me. The Bible said, leave vengeance unto me. That's a 12 verse. Verse 19. Dearly beloved, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Don't try to fight for yourself. Go on. But rather give Let place rather unto give wrath. Place unto wrath. For it is written. It is written. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. I will pay. Said the Lord. I will repay. So what does that mean? Do you know when you put a girl in the family where I run away? There are too many things God can do. God can stop your wife from being. A fruitful woman. If you like fast till kingdom come, God will not answer. If you will steal a believer's thing, God will send one good arm robber to steal ten times what you stole from that person. Why? Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Genesis 12, verse 2. What does it say? I don't know how many of you know that you cannot cheat a believer and get away with it. No. Why? He has a living God who can fight anybody. The, the Bible calls him the Lord of what? Hosts. He's a commander of a great army. He has enough people all over the world to track you down and deal with you. Yes. Do you beat your wife? Which I think is an act of madness. Any man who can beat his wife needs deliverance. You can run away from this fellowship. I know some people don't like to be told what their sins can do. So they, they run away. It's okay. As you run, you are going to hear God speak through the television. As you run, God speak through radio. As you run, God will give you a tract. He is an awesome God. You can't run away from him. 
is too powerful. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to do what? To fall into the hands of a living God. If God has more than one billion people, He will release to chase after you. Read on, sir. And I will bless them that bless thee. I will bless them that bless you. And curse him that curseth thee. Whoever curses you, whoever says God will punish you, that is the person God will punish. Whoever wants to steal from you, God will send thieves to steal from him. This is why you should not run away from the fear of the Lord. He's an awesome God. You entreat your wife, somebody will entreat your daughter. You steal from people, others will steal from you. Life is made in a way that nobody can cheat you. Because in every business involving two persons, God is the third person. He's the Lord of harvest and the law of harvest. What did I say? He's the Lord of harvest and what? The law of harvest. If anybody cheats you, God will, God will give you back what they took from you and will deal with that person. So as a child of God, you must please allow the fear of God to rule your heart. The Bible again says, don't judge others or else others will judge you. Why? You see, in judging of that, there are many things you don't know about that case. But clearly, your mother fighting your, your father, your father fighting your mother. Do you know there are many things your mother had not told you about that case? You don't know, any, you don't know everything about that case. And when you judge others, others will judge you. So what do you do? In a case between your mother and your father, take a neutral position. Don't take sides. Don't fight for your mother. Don't fight for your father. Just be a peacemaker between the two. Let's go on and hear more about. about let's see the book of Proverbs 3, verse 13, 14, 15, 16, 18. Anybody help us? What does it say? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. The Bible says, any man who finds wisdom. This is why I want it to be your prayer topic. Every morning, ask God for favor, ask him for wisdom. You don't pay anything to pray that prayer. Read on. And the man that getteth understanding. A man that gets understanding. For the merchandise of it is for better the than the merchandise of, of, silver. Than that of silver and gold. And the gain thereof that No, let's go back. The Bible says, he who gets understanding. Understanding about what? About life. About people around you. About your wife. No woman wants to be taken for granted. Every woman wants to be celebrated. There are two things every woman wants from you. Appreciate her and thank her. When she cooks for you and you lick your five fingers, say something, my brother. Don't become mumu. Say something. That food took her time to put together. Just lick your five finger and say to her, darling, you are beating my mother's record. You're a great cook. God bless you. That's all. You hear her sing, praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Ignore her. You hear her sing, pass me not. O oh, gentle Savior, there is a wicked man here. Right where you are this night, you need wisdom. Wisdom includes that when you greet anybody, greet that person as though he's a human being and he's somebody. Somebody to be honored and celebrated. Somebody to be respected and valued. If you are amazed, that person will leave a blessing upon you. I said, God bless you. But when you join those who agree with Frank Pan face and head pan voice, know that if you greet them, they look at you and say, Mom, look like a demon I saw last night. So you are a human being, this demon. 
Okay, man. He also will say, I saw a demon myself last night. It looks like you to you, man. Life is an echo. What you put in is what you bring out. When you say to your wife, you are an idiot, she will not say it to your hearing. But women fear confrontation. They don't like friction. So she will shut up her mouth. But she only shut up her mouth on the outside. On the inside, she said, your mother is an idiot. Your sisters are all idiots. Everybody from your village is an idiot. I'm a witness. It's a stupid man. Women, the women are wonderful people. They don't say what they want to say for fear of tension in the family. So you go away saying, I have defeated her. I call her an idiot and she said nothing. She said nothing on the outside. On the inside. Ah. <laughs> if you know what she's saying, you will not sleep that night. Go high, Howard. Me, Howard. Who is your father? Who is your father? Father, stupid man. Your sisters are all hammer. I know them. But me are hammer. The Holy Ghost is ready to give you wisdom. And wisdom is awful. It's awesome. Have you ever seen a humble girl? Let's see the book of Psalm chapter 25. I will take verse 9 and I will take verse 12. Beautiful things there. Yes, sir. The meek will he guide in judgment. How many of you know that God does not do business with the arrogant? You see, who is an arrogant girl? It's a girl who thinks she made herself pretty. Who is an arrogant man? It's a man that does not know money without gratitude is poverty. Cash without gratitude is what? Poverty. I don't care how rich you are. I want to announce it's God that gave you the money. And this awesome God can create three problems for you and all the money will fly away. Therefore, despite how beautiful you are, learn how to be grateful to God. Are you rich? You have six children. Not because you were a holy girl. Because I know some holy girls who are married in, in the state of virginity. Or who are not who are not mothers. God decides who will be what. It's not because you were a holy girl. No, no, no. I know of a girl who committed abortion about five times. Now she has six children. She says, I'm a wonderful person. It's a lie. God just showed you mercy. He said, the meek, a meek man is a teachable man. A man who says, I don't know it all. Let God help me. That's the meek man. How many of you know if you are humble and you know you are humble, you are no more humble? Because the knowledge of being humble can also lead you to arrogance. So I'm a, a humble person. I, mean, I have a friend. Everybody says he's a humble person. We we flew together to Jaws. They gave us um, a jet. I watched the way he picked the choice seat in that aircraft. I went and asked him, my brother, are you still humble because you chose the best seat in this aircraft and you took this seat first before others came in? He said, oh, okay, I can leave it for you. No, 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 don't leave it for me. I'm only asking, are you still humble? Because... <laughs> Said, you're a fall finder. No, sir. I only want to know which which flank you belong to. Are you among the humble or among the proud? Because you chose this seat first, and that is the choice seat in this aircraft. He said, Look, I'm praying. It's not discussing. I told him, my brother, I'm joining that prayer, but when we read the prayer, let's. The Bible said, Those who are teachable and humble shall God teach his ways. Read on. And the meek will he teach his way. All the pastors. Wait, wait. How many of you know that God 
taught Moses his ways and showed Israel his acts. Anybody that God will teach his secrets and his ways will be a great man. But others will only see what God is doing through you. I will not know how to go to those things. So this night I'm asking again, do I have anybody who has enough reason to say to God, make me wise? I want to be wise. Because of time, I'm sorry we, we didn't begin on time. Let's take the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 52. There are things that we need in our walk through life. And the Holy Ghost gives all of them. Yes? And Jesus and increased Jesus in, wisdom in wisdom and stature. And in stature. And in favor with and in God, favor with God and, man. and with man. Jesus needed these three things. But you need four. You needed wisdom. And you need wisdom. I need wisdom. We all need wisdom. Wisdom includes knowing that you ought to be small enough not to touch the glory of God when God does something wonderful. How many of us are small enough not to touch His glory? Because every time you say that my prayer made that miracle possible, you are touching His glory. It was not your prayer. It was God. I even have some pastors who get angry. That they prayed for somebody and he prospered. And they remember to give them an offering. The man doesn't owe you a kobo. Well, he didn't perform that miracle. <laughs> Even how the miracle was performed, you don't know. And only God can ask a man to bless you. You don't force a man to bless you. When you begin to protest, you are showing your arrogance. Do I have anybody here? You think somebody is owing you because you helped him and he prospered and you think he has forgotten you. And for forgetting you, you think God will punish him. God will not punish him. But the day God wants him to bless you, he will wake him up and ask him to bless you. Until he says it, let nobody worry. A woman said to me, but for me, that our church building will not be standing there. And now nobody celebrates me. God will punish all the members. And I said, Madam, nobody will punish them. Because the money you get, God gave you that money. Are you still here? Are you hearing me? The Bible goes on to say what again? It says, go on, sir. And Jesus increased in wisdom. In wisdom. And stature. In stature. And in favor. I don't want to go into favor. We don't have that time. But of all that God can give you, favor stands out as the most outstanding and the most prominent. We need to pray for those three things. Favor, wisdom, and what? 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 Well, I think I prefer the other two. Wisdom, and favor. It will transform and translate and change your life. Favor, I think, is the greatest. Mordecai was a great man, but favor made him a vice president of his country. Jesse was a prisoner, but favor made him what? Prime Minister. Favor will make a girl to marry the best of men. Yes. Favor can make a man pick the best job. So I'm going to ask. We are going, next week we shall go on to the area of faith and miracles. But do you know that there is a difference between working of miracles and healing? They are not the same gifts. They are two different gifts. But how many of you also know that God can give you more than one gift? Jesus was a prophet. He was also a teacher. He was an evangelist. He was also what? A pastor. He was what? A miracle worker. He was also a healer. One man. And I want to announce that God can give you more than one gift. Amen. 
We are going back to the book of Isaiah. That's where we shall stop. Isaiah 55, verse 1. And verse 2. What does it say? Oh. Oh. Everyone that tested. Everyone that tested, whether you're from Ikori Britam or Ikori Anaka or Ikori Nigeche, if you test for spiritual gifts, come ye to the, come waters, to the waters. And he that had no money. If you have no money, God come, can bless you with this gift, money or no money. Yes. Come ye, buy, come and, ye eat. buy and eat. Come, buy come. wine and milk without money and without Wise price. Wine is of anointing. And we now go down to the book of John, chapter 7, verse 37, 38, 39. Yes. In the last day, in the last day that of the great feast, day of the feast, that great day of the Jesus feast, stood and cried. Jesus stood and cried. Saying, saying if any man thirst, if any man thirst, let him come unto let me. Let him come unto and me. And drink. And drink. He that believeth on me, believe to me, as the scripture, has, the scripture said, has said, out of his belly, out of his belly shall, shall flow rivers of living waters. Men and brethren, you know you cannot test for something you don't know. Can you? How many of you test after salad? Nobody here. Salad. You know what they call salad? That thing goats eat. Sorry. What did I say? <laughs> when I first went to America, I had problem eating salad because it looked like uncooked vegetable. So I kept asking them, why don't you people cook your vegetable before you eat? Where I come from, we eat every every vegetable cooked. And they laughed at me. They said I was a bushman. I told them they were the bush people because no bushman would eat vegetable without cooking it. The funny thing was when I decided to eat the vegetable with them, I took the whole bowl of uh, salad uh, cream. As I was going, they were laughing. That's why people laughing. You told me I would need this cream, so I have. They said, "No, you don't. Don't don't take all of them." Ignorance is a terrible thing, but you can't lost after what you don't know. I wish we would all ask God to help us no more of what wisdom can do for us. Uh, when did I? Did you read sixteen sixteen? Eh? You you read it? No, there's a place where it says wisdom makes a king to love a man, a boy. Is that correct? Let's find it. What does that mean? It means if you have wisdom, people of honor will love you. And they will celebrate you. Huh? Fourteen thirty five. What does it say? Good, good. Anybody who is wise, prominent people will love you. But they know you will be dependable, you will be serviceable, you will be able to carry out, follow through instructions. This night I want those who will say to God, Father, bless me with wisdom. Bless me with wisdom. There is so much to say about wisdom. How many of you know that wisdom also tells you the right time to talk to somebody? Because timing is a master key to success. You don't talk to people every time. Somebody called me early in the morning today by 5 a.m. And she said, uh, Daddy, can you pray for me? I have running stomach. Pray, pray. Daddy, Daddy, hey, my friend, can you please ask me whether I am free or whether I am awake? I am just having my last dream, so I will not pray for you. Timing is very, very powerful. Let God help you to ask people for favor when they are relaxed. Even meeting a governor, a governor who is facing opposition will not listen to you. But if you meet him when he's relaxed, he can listen to you. And we therefore ask God to help us 
know the blessings of wisdom and to reward us with wisdom. Anybody who is ready to ask for that? Remember, if you are not born again yet, you won't understand what we are talking about. You will think that wisdom means to be crafty. No, wisdom has no business with craftiness. Can we then stand up, everybody? Just take five minutes and ask God to help you become wiser by the day. He should make you wiser. The Bible says, and Jesus grew in wisdom. We need to grow in wisdom. One more time, can we say to God, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh, Lord, do something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Something reasonable in my life, oh Lord.